Conversion factors. To write equivalent rates, conversion factors must be used. A conversion factor is used to convert from one unit to another and must be equal to one. So here are some examples of conversion factors that equal one. We have one pound over 16 ounces or 16 ounces over one pound, 100 centimeters to one meter or one meter to 100 centimeters, three feet to one yard or one yard to three feet, and one day to 24 hours or 24 hours to one day. And this is just a couple of examples. You can come up with a lot more as long as when you have your units over each other, it equals one. Now we need to identify out of all of these different conversion factors, which one is most helpful in a problem. So here's an example where again, we have to identify the conversion factor that results in the desired unit. So we need in this case, a conversion factor that converts minutes to seconds. So minutes, we need uh, a rate of minute to cancel. So we need, um, if minutes is in the numerator, we need a conversion factor ha that has minutes in the denominator, like 60, minute, 60 seconds over one minute. That will then cancel out your unit of minute and leave us with 60 seconds. Another example, now we want a conversion factor to convert 12 millimeters to meters. So again, we want the rate of millimeters to cancel so that we're left with the rate of meters. And if millimeters is in the numerator, we need a conversion factor with millimeters in the denominator, like one meter over a thousand millimeters. This will then cancel the millimeters out and we'll be left with 12 meters over 1,000, which if we divide 12 divided by 1,000 is going to leave us with 0 0.012 meters. Another example, we have converting 5 miles to feet. So the conversion factor, we want the rate of miles to cancel using that conversion factor so that we're left with the rate of feet. So we can use one where miles is in the denominator, like 5,280 feet per mile, which will cancel out our miles. And if we multiply five times 5,280, we'll be left with 26,400 feet. And that will be our desired unit. The miles canceled out using that conversion factor. Here's an example where we don't have the factor, we have to write one ourselves and think of one given what we're going to and where we're coming from. So here is example one, where we have two inches per one hour is equal to how many inches in one day? So inches is staying the same, but notice we're going from hour to a day. So we need a conversion factor that's going to relate hours to days. Well, we know that there is 24 hours in one day. So if we have our two inches to one hour, I want that hour to cancel out from the denominator. So I'm going to put hours in the numerator with my conversion factor of 24 hours to one day. That would then leave us with 48 inches, two times 24, for one day. Another example, we have five meters to one second is equal to how many meters in one hour? So we're moving from seconds to hours. So we need a conversion factor that helps us move from seconds to hours. Well, we know that there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. So we can have our meters five meters per second. And if we want the second to cancel out, we have to have the seconds in the numerator of our conversion factor. So we'll have times 3,600, 3,600 seconds over one hour. They do cancel out and then five times 3,600 will give us 18,000 meters per hour. This can also be used with a real life application. Conversion factors are used all the time. So we have, here's an example of a real life situation where the data transfer rate of an internet connection is the rate in bytes per second that a file can be transmitted across the connection. Data transfer is typically measured in kilobytes per second or megabytes where one megabyte equals two to the 10th kilobytes, which is 1,024 kilobytes. Suppose the data transfer rate in your internet connection is 500 kilobytes per second. Part A is asking us how long will it take to download a music file that is five megabytes. 
So it's like we're asking the question, 500 kilobytes per second. Well, the question is, we don't have kilobytes, we have five megabytes. So we need to know how many millibytes that's going to equal. How many, or not millibytes, megabytes, I'm sorry, how many megabytes per second that is going to equal. So our conversion factor we can use is one megabyte is going to equal 1,024 kilobytes. That is our conversion factor we can use in this problem. So we have 500 kilobytes per one second times, well, we want kilobytes to cancel out, so I'm going to put that in the denominator. So one megabyte is 1,024 kilobytes, and that's going to equal, well, kilobytes are going to cancel out, so that would be 500 megabytes for 1,024 seconds. But we don't want per one second, we want per, or we don't want per 1,024 seconds, we want how many megabytes per second. So we are going to divide the numerator and denominator by 1,024 to get that unit rate. So that is going to equal 0.49 megabytes per one second. So if we have 0.4, that's now what we have 0.49 megabytes, that using our conversion factor of one megabyte to 1,024 kilobytes, now we're saying we want five megabytes. So if we have 0.49 megabytes in one second, it's like asking, well, five megabytes would be how many seconds? It's an unknown. Well, to go from 0.49 to five, we have to multiply by 10.2. And so one second to our unknown, we need to multiply by 10.2. So five megabytes is going to take 10.2 seconds to download. That is our final answer using the conversion factor. Now part B is challenging us now to see how long it will take to download a video file that is 100 megabytes. Now we're still, our internet connection is still at the same rate as part A. So using our conversion factor, again, we're in megabytes, 100 megabytes. So our conversion factor told us that our download speed was 0.49 megabytes per one second. So 100 megabytes, we would have to figure out that unknown amount of time. So 0.49 times, uh, or to 100, is going to be times 204.1. So if I multiply one second by 204.1, that's going to give us that 100 megabytes is going to download in 204.1 seconds. Now, 204.1 seconds, we don't usually use seconds. If you go over 60 seconds, we want to convert to minutes. So we can actually use a conversion factor for that as well. It's not proper to leave 204.1 seconds. But we can multiply by a conversion factor of changing it, uh, changing it to minutes. We know that there one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So that will cancel out, oh, that will go back up, that will cancel out our seconds unit and give us 204.1 minutes divided by 60 seconds. And if we divide the numerator and denominator by 60, or not by 60 seconds, we got rid of that unit. It's just divided by 60. We need to divide by 60 just to simplify our minutes. 
So 204.1 minutes divided by 60 is going to give us 3.4 minutes. So it's going to take 10.2 seconds to download 5 megabytes and 3.4 minutes to download 100 megabytes. And again, we did that using two different conversion factors to go from megabytes, kilobytes to megabytes and then seconds to minutes.